guys. Thanks for tuning in. Now, y'all going to want to stay tuned for this episode where we're going to do these leaf spring two inch drop hangers. Now, I have not seen a video out there on these. I have seen a video on replacing the stock equipment hangers, but not two inch drop ones. So, definitely. If you've not found a video on these, this is where you need to watch it. Keep watching, and let's get this going. So yeah, as I said, I did some research on trying to find a video on these hangers, and I could not find one. All I could find one on was a guy had some of these, the stock equipment, they were really bad corroded out, so he was changing those out. Um, but that's basically all I could find, and there's really no good set directions out there for it. Um, the only thing that I have seen to find out is over there on the driver's side, you know how you have the gas tank. Well, a lot of them are saying you got to drop the gas tank and all that in order to put these in. So we're going to try to do that without dropping the gas tank and all that madness. So, um, and this will be a video that y'all can come to to watch this on if you want an extra two inch drop in the back so basically if y'all are new to this channel i picked, recently picked this truck up and i'm just getting it level with the front up here and we got two inches to go we already did the drop shackles um in the previous video i'll leave it up over here in the corner so y'all can click on that if you haven't seen it already and where I'm going with this truck as far as drop is concerned, I'm going to try to do it different than everybody else. I don't really want to do a C-notch. And up front, I don't want to mess with the camber on the wheels. So we're going to do a drop on this truck where you don't mess with your camber. And you also, back here, you don't have to C-notch it and worry about bumping the bed and, and all that stuff because I don't want to do that. So, and also, I don't want to have to mess with the factory ride quality as far as shocks and all that. I want to try to keep it as stock as I can, but still drop it. So, our, my next option on this to drop it three more inches is a whole different leaf spring setup. So, if I can get that to work, drop it another three inches... That'll be seven inches in the back. And then in the front, we will do the DJM control arm three inch drop, which keeps the factory alignment, keeps everything factory. I don't want to deal with spindles and stuff anymore up front because it eliminates your steering even. Like you can't steer and make tight turns as much as you could with the factory stuff. So that's where we're going on this. I've lowered enough trucks now where I'm going to try to do it different than what I did with the rest. And the ride quality will stay freaking epic and all that. So keep watching for pre more videos to come on the next steps of the lowering the truck when we get to that point. But right now we're just going to do... Um, these here, the hangers, and see how well that works out. Thanks for sticking along, and thanks for watching. Let's get to it. All right, so I wanted to show you all before I go dropping this down, as you can see, we're at exactly 3 foot 36 inches. So we'll see how far she goes down after installing these. Now, on the front, before when I measured it, it was like 34. Yeah, so we're about 33, so 
we might be a little bit an inch higher or so back here, but it'll almost be level. All right, guys, so I got all set up here. I wanted to show y'all. This is basically what we're taking off back here. And I went ahead and secured the leaf spring because once I take that off, you know, it's going to want to drop. So in order for it to not drop on me, that's what we're going to do. Now, as you can see here, it has rivets on it. So they basically said you can either drill them, um, use an air chisel, or grinder, whatever. Whatever you have that you can use to take those off, you know, with basically without running the frame. So I'll try an air chisel first and see how well that works. And then from there, we'll see what happens. Alright guys, so I went ahead and pulled this bolt out, and you can kind of see because of my thing here, if you see how loose that is, see, so basically it's just sitting there, no pressure on it, nothing, now I'm going to try an air chisel on these rivets, but I've never really had too much luck with those air gun so but we'll try it and see if it'll pop them right off or or what so if not then we will probably have to drill them so let me put my headphones on and all that because it's about to get loud let's see if i can put y'all right there before the air chisel didn't work so we're gonna get out the old rusty die grinder and go to town on this bad boy
as you can see the grinder takes them off pretty quick so I'm gonna go all the way around but I'm not gonna leave my phone in here because we're getting particles all over it so I'll get all these ground off and then I'll bring y'all back all right guys after grinding cutting drilling beating I finally got this thing to come off so as you can see there's the piece there so basically looks like this piece here is going to go in its place <sighs> yeah so definitely a beat down So, let me see if I can get this hanger more ratcheted up, and then we'll try to see if we can get this bracket all up in there. Alright, so this is basically how it sets up in here. You can see before the mount was right here, and now it's way up here. Now, what I did notice is with the bolt, uh, there's no hole in there. And this is already, this is where it would bottom out at. So, like I was thinking, you're probably going to have to put the bracket on this with the bolt through it. And then jack it up until you get it to where you can line up the holes to put these bolts in. Unless you want to drill a hole through your frame where you can run it right through which I might just go ahead and do that go ahead and mark it here and then put a hole through it so that way I can pull it out later on but basically that's the difference in the height because the other one was sitting right in here so you can see the visual comparison there on how it gives you that extra two inches of it, it rate it lifts the leaf spring up so lowers the wheel down so anyway let's see if I can mark this and drill a hole in it and then we'll go from there all right so I wanted to show you all I finally got the bolt started and I went ahead and slid that bolt in and you can see here I'm using my jack to jack it up where I needed it and I needed it to come a little bit more aft so I put the ratchet strap to it right there and pulled it back enough to get these bolts started so yeah just kind of if you're doing this by yourself you got to use what you got so just jack it up a little bit and kind of keep tapping on this until you you get the holes almost where you need it. And I went ahead and put the bolt in through here without drilling the hole. And that's how we're going to do it on the other side too. So if you do it this way, um, you won't have to take the gas tank out. Which is exactly what I was hoping for. So, But the bad thing is, is if you ever want to take the leaf spring back out, you're basically probably going to have to take all this hardware out to get the leaf spring out so fun fun so let me get these tight and then we'll move on over to the other side Alright, 
so this is what I wanted to show y'all. As you can see, we got all the rivets loose. And we dropped this down enough, the bolt's right here, where we can swing it straight out without having to take the tank out. And then basically we'll do like we did with the other one, put the bracket on and then pump it back up. So you don't have to take the gas tank out on this, so don't let that scare you on them saying that you need to take the gas tank out because... It is all good. Don't have to take it out. So basically, I'm going to drop it down a little bit more. Take this bolt out. Just take a hammer and knock them rivets out. And we'll run the bolts in. And we should be ready to put the wheels back on. So it ain't too bad once you get all set up. Alright guys, we got everything back together. So here's the moment of truth. To see... How well she squats. So we're at about 34 and a half, and I said the front was 33 and a half, so we're about an inch different. Over here, we're at 34. So there's about an inch difference, probably, I think. I'm going to notice it too bad. But it definitely looks a lot better. We got rid of that rake. So, of course, if I put some stuff in the back... It will change it up a bit. And as you can see, there's the hanger there. So let's see if I measure the difference between... six inches yeah where well, this is about five so 
So basically what I'm thinking, these are a 17 inch rims. So let's see. Well, it says they're 16, so 17, 18, 19. So if that was 20, the rims would be about right there. And then we can have three more inches of rubber. Yep. But yeah, that's uh, basically all there is to it. See this side over here. So basically we got two inches with that and two inches with that which give us four inches. So I think we're good to go now. All right. There we go. a long ways to go before uh, he gets as low as the general. But anyway, hopefully y'all liked this video and hopefully it was informative enough to let y'all know what you can do with lowering the trucks without having to do the C notch if you don't want to. So anyway, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for subscribing, give it a thumbs up, and until next time, keep it simple. Keep it sweet.